tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. My first encounter with the bird was at the antique shop I work at about a month ago. We received a delivery from the estate of a bland man whose collection languished in legal limbo for several years before it made its way to us. The bird itself was tucked inside a steamer trunk wrapped in an old funerary quilt, presumably because it unsettled the packers with its eyeless sockets that made everyone feel as though it were watching them. It stood around 18 inches high and was constructed from what appeared to be a single piece of iron that had been hammered and sculpted into the shape of a crow if it were suspended in the moment after it took flight. Its wings with their sharp edges appeared to reach out and its partially parted beak ready to pluck eyes from the skulls of its prey. We put the bird in a prominent place in the store to help us sell it in time for Halloween, but while most of every customer commented about how cool the bird was, no one actually was interested in owning the thing. Weeks passed and I decided to buy it myself and use it as the centerpiece of my Halloween decorations until I can sell it to some guy on eBay. Within an hour of taking possession of the bird, I found an ideal place for it to perch its curled talons on the corner of the top of my bookcase next to the bedroom window until closer to Halloween night so as to minimize the risk of someone running off with the bird. I was pleased with its placement until I realized that the bird's neck craned towards the bed in the middle of the night. So I turned to face it towards the window instead. Relieved, I relaxed my grip on the bird to go back to bed, and my finger lightly grazed the edge of its wing and got a sliver of metal to embed itself in the soft pad of my finger. The irritation of my finger persisted through the day at work, stabbing deeper with every box move every item touched. And then I came home to a most peculiar sight. Buster was more highly strung than I'd ever seen him. And he quickly led me back into the bedroom where the iron bird was laying face up on the floor next to the bed. I thought maybe the dog had accidentally knocked into the shelf and sent the bird tumbling down. But that didn't account for the bird being on the far side of the bed. Or how a six inch gouge appeared on the wall opposite the shelf. I stowed the bird on my desk instead and faced it towards the wall until I decided to put up decorations the following evening. I set the bird on the banister over the porch over a freshly carved jack-o'-lantern. Which rested next to the doormat in front of my door. I was pleased with the Poe-esque aesthetic and was momentarily worried that one of the neighborhood delinquents would make off with a bird, before silently deciding that I would be quite happy if someone did steal the damn thing. The next few days went without incident and the bird maintained its position over the pumpkin until the thunderstorm came barreling over the horizon on the big day and caused Buster and I to take shelter. The dog made it up the stairs and stopped by the door to wait for me for the few pivotal moments it took me to catch up. I made it to the top of the steps just as a straight wind blew through in between the buildings and pushed the iron bird afraid from the banister with the tips of its wings leading the charge on top of the buster. I knew I was next, so I threw the damn thing into the dumpster with vengeful glee and then had to dispose of what was left of my beloved dog before going to work. The day passed in a distracted haze of the jarring heartbreak and from the pulsing pain in my now infected splinter in my finger before I found myself back in front of the drying blood stain on the porch again. I swallowed my emotions and hurried inside to look for something to dull the pain, and some medical supplies to dig the embedded sliver out of, of the bird out of my finger. I went back into the bedroom and sat on the edge of the bed, as I set about digging with a pair of tweezers, but only succeeded in aggravating the blister, so I hastily lanced the flesh bubble open and tried again. Working around the dead and deflated skin was painful and disturbing, but I finally managed to get a hold of the melodic object. The glass of the bedroom window erupted from its pain and showered into the room along with the continuing rain and caused me to drive the splinter deeper into my finger. I jumped to my feet in a fury and marched toward what had been thrown into my room, ready to throw it back at whoever thought vandalism was good Halloween fun. I stopped on the other side of the bed and felt another stab of pain in my finger. 
the bird was balancing on the shelf, as I had placed it weeks earlier. Its eyeless sockets watched me with an envious glare, and fresh carrion dripped from its beak. I tried to snatch it away from its perch and smash it into everything I could to mangle its form, but the bird struck first and leapt at me to tear and peck at my chest and face with a vicious barrage. Pain washed over me and overwhelmed me just as I managed to pen back one of its wings, and the last thing I saw was a flash of the bird's eyeless stare. I didn't die that Halloween night, but things haven't been the same. Why hasn't it killed me, you may ask? I don't know. But I know that whoever might see it next can expect to see lifelike human eyes staring at you with ravenous envy. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.